Thou art worthy, thou art worthy, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, <coughs> glory and honor, glory and honor and power, for you have created, yes, thou hast created, for thou hast created all things, and for your pleasure they are created. Thou art worthy, O Lord. Oh yes, oh yes. We will be reading that famous little portion from the book of Revelation <clears throat> today, but first we will start with Obadiah, the wonderful little prophet book of Obadiah, this great and mighty prophet, and his name means servant of Yah. Isn't that appropriate <laughs> for a prophet? So I welcome you today on this December 13. Welcome to a brand new day. <clears throat> Welcome to a continuing portion of the Word of God. And my goodness, we're just down to a few pages left to finish out the year. And um, <clears throat> I have not heard from the Lord that I'm to stop. So I'm, I'm pretty sure come January 1, we'll, I'll just flip to the front of the book. And we will just joyfully and, and be excited. <laughs> to start a new year with your book at the beginning again. So good morning to each and every one of you. We'll get right into Obadiah, <clears throat> this servant <clears throat> of Yah. The vision, it's a vision of Obadiah. Thus says the Lord God concerning Edom, we have heard a report from the Lord and a messenger has been sent among the nations, saying, Arise, and let us rise up against her for battle. Oh, there's danger in the air. Behold, I will make you small among the nations. You shall be greatly despised. The Lord is going to do that. The pride of your heart has deceived you. And oh my goodness, most of the time when we read words like this, it always ends up that the first main problem was pride. Pride. The pride of your heart has deceived you. <clears throat> you who dwell in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, who you who say in your heart, who will bring me down to the ground? Well, there's a prideful statement, if we ever heard one, right? Though you ascend as high as the eagle, and though you set your nest among the stars, from there I will bring you down, says the Lord. If thieves had come to you, if robbers by night, oh, how you will be cut off. Would they not have stolen till they had enough? If grape gatherers had come to you, would they not have left some gleanings? Some. Oh, how Esau shall be searched out. How his hidden treasures shall be sought after. All the men in your confederacy shall force you to the border. The men at peace with you shall deceive you and prevail against you. Those who eat your bread shall lay a trap for you. No one is aware of it. So this truly is a prophecy before all these facts start to fall together. Will I not in that day, says the Lord, even destroy the wise men from Edom and understanding from the mountains of Esau? And then your mighty men, O Teman, 
shall be dismayed to the end that everyone from the mountains of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. Slaughter, a terrible war. For violence against your brother Jacob, shame shall cover you. Now, here we're coming out with the reasons, aren't we? Violence against your brother Jacob, shame shall cover you, and you shall be cut off forever. In the day that you stood on the other side, in the day that strangers carried captive his forces, when foreigners entered his gates and cast lots for Jerusalem, even you were as one of them. But you should not have gazed on the day of your brother in the day of his captivity. Nor should you have rejoiced over the children of Judah <clears throat> in the day of their destruction. Nor, oh boy, there's a lot of reasons here. Nor should you have spoken proudly in the day of distress. You should not, you should not have entered the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Indeed, <clears throat> you should not have gazed on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. You should not have stood at the crossroads to cut off those from among who escaped nor should you have delivered up those among them who remained in the day of distress. <clears throat> so boy, <clears throat> pardon me. The Lord is just really laying out every single reason, isn't he? For the day of the Lord upon all the nations is near. As you have done, it shall be done to you. Your reprisal shall return upon your own head. For as you drank on my holy mountain, so shall all the nations drink continually. Yes, they shall drink and swallow. And they shall be as though they had never been. <clears throat> and if you want to do a lot of research, a lot of the people he's talking about, those those nations, those tribes, they're gone. But on Mount Zion, on Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness. The house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. The house of Jacob shall be a fire <clears throat> and the house of Joseph a flame. But the house of Esau shall be stubble. They shall kindle them and devour them, and no survivor shall remain of the house of Esau. No survivor, for the Lord has spoken. The south shall possess the mountains of Esau, and the lowland shall possess Philistia. They shall possess the fields of Ephraim and the fields of Samaria, Benjamin, ben Hamin shall possess Gilead, and the captives of this host of the children of Israel shall possess the land of the Canaanites. As far as Zarephath, the captives of Jerusalem who are in Sheparad shall possess the cities of the south. Then saviors shall come to Mount Zion to judge the mountains of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Wow. <clears throat> wow. <clears throat> that is an action-packed war story. We move right along, and, and we, will, we will enjoy tomorrow. Jonah, this precious little book, was just a one-day read here. Tomorrow, Jonah. Oh, I love that book, don't you? 
We move right along now to Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. And John continues, After these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this. Immediately, I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven, and one, capital O-N-E, one sat on the throne. And he who sat there was like a jasper, and a sardius stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne, in appearance like an emerald. Around the throne were 24 thrones. And on the thrones, I saw 24 elders sitting, clothed in white robes. And they had crowns of gold on their heads. And from the throne proceeded lightnings, thunderings, and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Before the throne, there was a sea of glass, like crystal. And in the midst of the throne... And around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes in front and in back. Oh, check out Kathy's graphics. Check them out. Wow. Full of eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second living creature like a calf. The third living creature had a face like a man. And the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within. And they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Get ready. Get ready, my brothers and sisters. Is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and they worship him who lives forever and ever. And they cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, Thou art worthy, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, glory and honor, glory and honor and power, for thou hast created, hast all things created. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they were created. Thou art worthy, O Lord. You are worthy, O oh Lord. Only you are worthy. 
You are the only one found worthy to open the books, to sit on the throne next to Father God. And you paid the price. You shed your very own blood just to save us. We didn't even know that we were far from a relationship personally with the Lord. You came and took that beating on your back so that we can pray and the Lord heals us. You came and shed your very own blood that we might be reconciled again with our Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ. And that's the only way. The only way is to come to Jesus and to repent that great R word again, to repent of your sins and ask Jesus to come into your heart, to live, to stay, to walk with you, to live with you, to comfort you, to guide you, Holy Spirit will come and you will know. You will know. Burdens will leave. Prayers will get answers. You will know that God has redirected your life to his perfect path. You're no longer on your own failing path. Falling down, getting up, falling down, getting up. No, he will be with you every moment. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's the good news. That's the good news. Have you received him? Please pray that simple prayer in your own words, but kind of patterned after what I have said and what the word of God here has said. And he will receive you. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be fancy. Just your own words from your own heart. I mean, whatever you need to do. Ball your head off, cry, shout, scream, whatever. But come to him. Come to him today. Time is getting short. <clears throat> we just know that. We can see that by the signs across this world. The time is getting short. We don't know what day he or night he will arrive. But it will be an instant coming in clouds. And then it's too late. We need to repent while we are living before we die or he comes, which either happens first. Please, that's why we're here. That's why we're here. That's why I'm here. I have a burden for people who do not have Jesus yet. I have a burden. And if you accept the Lord Jesus by being here for this reading, please put that down and we will pray for you. We will uplift you in prayer as you begin this new Christian walk. And you might be a church goer. You might be a pastor, an elder, or you might be someone who's been depressed, feeling miserable, just feeling like I can't make it another day. Come. The invitation is wide open. Come. Come to Jesus right where you are. You don't have to go anywhere right where you are. Come. He loves you. And he is arms are wide open to embrace you. We move along now to Psalm 132. And this is the 12th Song of Ascents. Psalm 132. Lord, remember David and all his afflictions, how he swore to the Lord and vowed to the mighty one of Jacob. Surely, I will not go into the chamber of my house or go up to the comfort of my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids 
until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling place for the mighty one of Jacob. Behold, we heard of it in Ephratah. We found it in the fields of the woods. Let us go into his tabernacle. Let us worship at his footstool. Arise, O Lord, to your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness and let your saints shout for joy. For your servant David's sake, do not turn away the face of your anointed. The Lord has sworn in truth to David. He will not turn from it. He will set upon your throne the fruit of your body. If your sons will keep my covenant and my testimony, which I shall teach them, their sons also shall sit upon your throne forevermore. For the Lord has chosen Zion, Zion. The Lord has chosen, chosen. He has desired it for his dwelling place. This is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provisions. I will satisfy her poor with bread. I will also clothe her priests with salvation. <clears throat> and her saints, that's you and me, shall shout aloud for joy. And you know, if you're let me give you an example. If you're at your favorite team at a, at a ball game, it's your favorite team, and it has looked through the whole game like they were going to lose, and suddenly things turn around. They get some points, and they win. That kind of shouting and celebration. You've seen many pictures. You've been in the crowds where you actually jump up and down and scream and yell and shout, and you are so very happy. Well, all her saints shall shout aloud for joy. I'd like to say <laughs> that a ball game does not compare. That's a very small comparison. To the Lord? To the Lord coming? Oh, my. Now that's something to shout about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will shout quietly so I don't wake up Sam yet. Hallelujah, Lord. There you are. You have accomplished the cross. There's healing for us now. You took that beating on your back. And it tore ribbons of flesh down. Those hooks went in and on those Roman soldiers with their big, tough arms ripped. You did that. And I will never really understand why that was the plan of the Lord. And that's the point. We honor and fear and respect God Almighty for his plan because he has set that foundation just for you because he loves you so much. Just for you, Jesus died and poured out his blood. I, I like to think if you were the only one living at the time, he still would have come and gone to the torture of the cross just for you. And God calls that the ultimate love, that one would lay down his life for another. Ultimate love. That's what he did. Please, renew yourself in him today. Please, accept him today. Totally casting all your care, all your burdens upon him. For he cares for you. 
Let this be the most magnificent Christmas you ever celebrated as you are born again in him. And he will draw you into a new relationship. Oh, you will be so blessed. You will be shouting for joy. Oh, hallelujah. And her saints shall shout aloud for joy. And there I will make the horn of David grow. I will prepare a lamp for my anointed. His enemies I will clothe with shame. But upon himself, his crown shall flourish. Wow. Magnificent, magnificent words. And we wrap up today's wonderful, wonderful reading with Proverbs chapter 29, verses 24 and 25. Proverbs 29, verses 24 and 25. Oh, listen up. Whoever is a partner with a thief hates his own life. Now that's what God says, and so that's truth. But there's you don't know any thieves that are thinking that, do you? Oh, I just hate my own life. No, they they think they're happy out there thieving and taking what doesn't belong to them and stealing and spending it and, and enjoying it and but God says, whoever is a partner with a thief, if you go along with a thief and join in on those acts, he says, you are in a condition where you've let all of the troubles of life take you very low to this point. And he says, you don't realize it, but you, you are in a position of hating your own life. That, that's, no one wants to be there. And that's why we are reading God's word. So that if you, that is where you find yourself, <clears throat> we encourage you, you can come out of that today, right where you are, right where you are. You can pray intimately with your heavenly father through his only son, Jesus Christ. And you will find as you walk along, your prayers are turning around. They're getting answers. The burden is lighter. You're feeling joy. You're wanting now to have other believers as friends. Oh, it's a wonderful life. <laughs> I love those words. I love that movie. It's a wonderful life in Christ. God says, his enemies I will clothe with shame. You see, God will come to your rescue. But upon himself, his crown shall flourish. So, Proverbs 29, 24 says, Whoever is a partner with a thief, hates his own life. He swears to tell the truth, but he reveals nothing. He reveals nothing. And why is that? Because he's in big trouble partnering with a thief. The fear of man brings a snare. But whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. You're safe to trust in the Lord. You're safe in fellowship with him. There's safety, peace, knowledge, wisdom, comfort, direction. Every good word you can think of is in him. Hallelujah. Be blessed today. Please, please, let your heart unburden itself <clears throat> and give it all to the Lord and come to him. He is Christmas. Christ must. He is who the celebration is about. 
It is he. Father God, help us, each one of us, Lord, to, to just determine to seek you, to seek you more and more, to seek you uh, just in a deeper way, to spend time, to actually just set aside time. And the best time is early, early, early in the morning, <clears throat> when nothing does distract you. Nobody else is up. That's the best time. Seek him. And you will find your day makes a big turn around to joy. You will see him touch every area of your life. Father God, I pray that, Lord. <clears throat> I pray today, precious Father God, that your word, that Holy Spirit comes and touches many a heart. Touch, please, Lord, people who have just sat on the fence about making a decision. Please, Lord, touch them. Cause them to say, I've had enough of this struggle. I've had enough. I, I don't know what it's, how it's going to be, but I, I need to just jump off this fence of indecision. And I need to receive you, Lord. I need to receive you. I give you all of my problems. I give you all of my mistakes. All of the times I've failed. All of the times, instead of praising you, I've sworn your name. I've used your name to swear. I, I, I've done, I've said awful things to people. I've done some terrible things. Whatever it is, let it all surface. Let it all come to mind. And then name it. I mean, speak it out, because faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So you see, it takes speaking it, not silence. We can meditate silently. But we need to speak out those things to repent. And ask the Lord to forgive us and wash us clean and wash all that away. And ask him, please, Lord, let your perfect plan for my life start now. Guide me. Help me. Show me how to just stop that little second before I say something or I do something and check it out with you. And when I do that a lot of times, I never do open my mouth because it wasn't too good. <laughs> or I stop and I say, no, not going to go there. Or maybe it's just not to be for today, maybe next week. Check everything out. Holy Spirit wants to guide you. Oh, Holy Spirit, I pray, please. Please come and knock on the hearts and, and cause them, Lord, to trust to come to you. Just, just that moment of trust to come to you. We bless you for it, Lord. Lord, I pray for peace in Jerusalem. I pray for peace. I pray for Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu and the government he is putting together. I thank you, Lord, that you have brought him back. It, it's really miraculous. And I am excited to see what you are going to do now. Another new time. Lord, bless your people. We are so grateful to see your word coming to pass concerning the prophecies of your people. We are excited to see videos of bustling Jerusalem, the malls, the people. And when they're interviewed, it's so interesting. They've come from everywhere. Lord, you've brought your people home from every place on earth. And you are still doing it. There's a lot more to come. 
And we are excited to be able to be in on the prayers for it, to be able to see and rejoice with them, to be able to pray when things look like they're going sour and they are under oppression. Our prayers are so important. So we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Yes, we pray. And Lord, I hold up America and I pray for our country. I pray. I pray for the church in America. I pray for all of our brothers and sisters, lifting you up. I care about you. I care about your life. It's my desire to be able to shout for joy when you share great testimonies, great prayers that are answered, and you, you exclaim how your life is walking in a deeper fashion with the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for all those in governing positions from the president on down. And I pray for their souls that they would be drawn unto you if they don't know you, that they would come. And Lord, those who they know, but they have absolutely decided against you say you will give them over to a reprobate mind. And we are listening to some of them that we're not too sure they haven't reached that point. Because what they have to say is very troubling. So, Father God, we hold up from the White House down to the smallest house in America, the poorest house in America. And we'd ask, Lord, that Holy Ghost would begin a blaze across this land, a blaze to touch lives, a blaze that will cause people to come to you, that will cause them to give up the unforgiveness, the bitterness, to give up rehearsing old failures, Letting Satan, just like a record, put it on again. Oh, that, that's such torment. That's such torment. I fight that. All, I fight that all the time. Satan trying to bring up old things. I've already repented and it's already forgiven, but he's trying to tell me it isn't. Don't let him have your mind. Don't let him have your mouth. Don't let him... Take your footsteps, walk it out, talk it out, pray it out, sing and rejoice it out with the Lord Jesus Christ. Have a wonderful day. I love you all so very much. Bye-bye.